Today, I'll be showing you how to use Nano, the text editor, through the terminal. Most Linux distributions come pre-installed with Nano, so you don't have to worry about installing it. If you do need to install Nano for some reason, you can do sudo apt install Nano, and that should take care of things. As you can tell, I already have the latest version, so there's nothing to update or install. I'm gonna clear things out, and let's get started by using Nano. So in order to use Nano, all we'll have to do is type in Nano inside the directory that you're currently in. One thing I'll mention on the top right of the screen here, you'll see the keys being displayed. That way you don't get lost while I'm talking through these basics. If I press enter, that will open up the Nano text editor. So if you want to get started in typing in this file, just start typing. I'm going to put Savvy Nick in here. I'll put jumped over a fence and in Savvy Bob followed. There's nothing special that you have to hit in order to get started here. You can simply start typing. If you want to navigate through the document, you can use the arrow keys to do so. If there are no new lines, you have to press enters instead. So notice I'm hitting the up arrow key, now the down arrow key. And when I reach the end of lines, I can't hit down anymore. Instead, I have to press enter to create a new line. So now I know which line I'm at by the blinking cursor display. I'm gonna start typing again, savvy, Nick jumped over a fence again. And it's really that easy to navigate the lines and enter in text. One thing that I do want you to realize at the bottom of the screen, I'll actually bring this up a little bit so we can see it a little better, is a whole bunch of options. The first ones we wanna focus on is the write out and the exit feature. If you want to save and exit out of a file, all you have to do is hit control and then X. And then I'll be asked the question, save modified buffer. That just means, do you want to save what you currently have in nano? Y for yes and for no. I do want to save this, so I'm going to type in Y. And that's going to give me a few more options as well as a file name to write. We haven't given this file a name yet, so it's asking for one. I'm going to call this one new file.txt. And then if we press enter, the file will exit and save. If I type ls, we should see that new file.txt. We sure do. New file.txt is now located in the directory where we opened nano up in. So how do you open up a file that already exists? Well, new file exists now. We type in nano again, and then we type in new file.txt or whatever name of a file that you want to open up, replace it, and then press enter. And look at that, we're back in the file that we just got done creating. Okay, let's make some changes here so we can use a few different commands. In order to copy things, if I hit shift and then the arrow key, notice how the cursor is highlighting the sentence now. I'm going to the end of this sentence here. And right now, if you have a blinking cursor, that item is not highlighted. So if I wanna highlight everything, I need to make sure that it's in a solid highlight. Then I'll do control K, which stands for cut. Notice that deletes the line, but it is currently saved on the clipboard. So if I do control U, that's going to paste that line that I had before up further. And that's how you cut and paste things in Nano. So what if I want to save, but I don't want to exit? Well, there's an option for that as well. To do that, you have to do control O. And notice it says file name to write. You can write it out to a new file name, but since we've already written it once, it understands that the file name is currently new file.txt. In order to accept this, you just have to press enter and it will save to that file. It says it wrote eight lines, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines that it wrote out. So another neat feature is we can actually write in a file. That's this read file option. Notice that these carrots here just represent the control key. And in order to read a file, we do control R. And it says file to insert from. So you can now navigate the entire file system from here. And it says we're located in the current directory. If you need help navigating the file system, I do have the, a Terminal Absolute Basics video. I'll post it in the description below. I'll search for a file that I want to open up here in this directory. It's called Simple List. I believe I have a file. If you tab a couple times, you will get information about what's located in the current directory. Source is what I need, and I want to add in the main CPP file. I'm going to press Enter, and notice that we've inserted a bunch of lines now with the lines we had written before up top. Fantastic. Now, if you ever wanna get rid of a line, just do backspace and that will get rid of those extra lines that you may not want. And the way it works is wherever the cursor was pointed to, 
before you actually read in a file, that is where it will read the contents of the file into. So for example, if I had my cursor up above here, it would read the file in between these two lines. Now what's important and why I did this is to show you the undo and redo feature. If you press escape and then type in U, notice how it's editing things out. So every time I'm pressing escape and then U, and in order to redo things, just do escape and then E. So it says nothing to redo, and that's really it. Now it is a little funny how it works. So now I don't necessarily suggest undoing too much because the redo feature can get stuck. It's not quite as good as what you would find in Vim. So since I kind of messed things up, so I'm gonna read in the file one more time from my simple list source main CPP file. In between the lines, notice how it wrote in between. And I'm going to search for some stuff. Notice how I have simple list written out multiple times throughout the file. We can search for things by doing control W. And it says search, so we get a search bar here. What do I wanna search for? How about we start by searching for simple list? It is case sensitive, so make sure you're capitalizing letters where they need to be, and then press enter. Notice it highlighted the very first instance of simple list. If I do control W again, notice the search is still simple list. I can press enter to go to the next instance. So if I keep doing that, control W enter, control W enter, control W enter, you'll notice that I am navigating through the file in each occurrence of my last search, which was simple list. Eventually, the search will wrap back around. Notice it went back up top and it says search wrapped. Of course, if you're looking for something else, you do control W and just start typing in some other word you're looking for. So like username instead. I'm gonna save and exit one more time here. Control X and says, do I wanna save the modified buffer? Well, I wanna show you this. Yes, I do. Notice that this time it's telling me file name to write and it's already auto filled the file because this file already exists. Before when we use control X, the file didn't exist. So you had to specify a name and then press enter. Also something else I wanna mention, you don't necessarily have to be in the directory where you're going to edit the file in to use nano. You can use it from wherever. So if you type in nano and then you actually navigate to the file. So for example, this file is actually located in the root directory under home, savvy Nick, and it's called newfile.txt. That's another way of opening the file. I'll press enter and look at that same file that we were editing before. If you ever need to know what directory and what file you're editing, it is up top so you know. And then on the left, you'll see GNU Nano 6.2. That's just denoting the version of Nano that you're using. Nano is an excellent way to edit files through the terminal quickly and efficiently with a nice user interface that kind of resembles a GUI. If you do control Q, that actually searches backwards, meaning the opposite way. So we should expect to find the last occurrence of simple list. Again, this is case sensitive. There we go, I found the last one. Now a few more intermediate tips. If you do control A, that'll take you to the beginning of a line. If you do control E, that will take you to the end of a line and press enter. Okay, if for some reason you want to replace multiple occurrences of text in a file, you can do control slash and then type in what you're searching for. For example, let's just do simple list. I'm gonna change the S to an uppercase S and then press enter again. And now you have the option of replacing all occurrences, the first occurrence or not this current occurrence. So do we wanna replace this instance? I'm just gonna press in A and that should replace all occurrences. Look at that. Now all the simple lists have a capital S. Earlier I said control W can help you find something. For example, let's look for simple list again make sure to obey the case sensitivity. Here's a pretty cool one. If you wanna do file navigation, you can do control T. Control T will get you in and ask you what command you want to execute. You can actually execute commands just like you would in the terminal. For example, I typed in LS and that printed all the lines of the current terminal directly in my file. It's pretty wild. So if I do control T again, I can always cancel out by doing control C. Control C helps a lot, especially if you wanna see the status of a file. Control C tells you how many lines there currently are, what line you're on versus how many there are, what percentage down the page you are, what column you're currently in, and how many characters are currently located inside the file. Some good metrics to look at if you need it. Anyways, that's the majority of commands here in Nano. You should be able to use it pretty efficiently at this point. Congratulations, 
Let me know if you're excited to start using it in the comments section below. Did you learn something? Let me know. Don't forget to smash that like button. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux, and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.